quick note before we begin, the editing of this episode really clarified for me some of the issues in our recording equipment, and that is being upgraded as we speak. So please bear with us, and I hope you enjoy the show. This is Starforged Tabula Rasa. Written and performed by Redstone Marchender. Based on the game by Sean Tompkin. A man sleeps soundly inside a metal cylinder. Along the inside of the metal walls are numerous arms, but the man is not yet aware of his surroundings until now. Oh, oh, oh what is it? Get out, please. Part of the cylinder becomes transparent. Information is displayed upon its surface. As he reads, his hand instinctively goes to the back of his neck. He feels a small bump there. A foreign body of unknown origin has been detected. Infiltration of central nervous system complete. Crew member compromised? Reassigned to new role. Incubator? What? Wait, what? What is what, what? Oh, hey. Is that... Is that a cat? Through the glass? Oh, man. This stuff is... Oh. Cat. The cat is changing colors. It's... That may be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Oh, I think it's... I think it's trying to talk. But some undeterminable amount of time later, they're woken up again by the alarm. System error. System error. System error. So it's at that point that the pod writes itself and they find themselves on their feet as the, the transparent material in front of them actually disappears and they are shoved through it by some unknown means. The guy's standing there, he's on wobbly legs, and he notices to his left that there is a panel that is near the floor, it's been removed, and there's a whole bunch of wires and pieces of machinery that have been torn out of this. Man looks around for anyone, for that creature he saw earlier, calls out. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, here, here kitty, kitty. Hello? Hello? Is anyone here? He hears no response, but he is hearing this annoying whine. Something tells him he knows what this is, and he starts moving forward. He looks around, and he realizes he's in some sort of cargo bay. He can see the large exit, and he realizes he's definitely on a ship. What else has a cargo bay? But this cargo bay seems to be fairly empty, other than these few different containers, like this medical pod that seems to be malfunctioning now. Clearly, there's no one here in this cargo bay. So it's time to move forward. He leaves the cargo bay through the into the central part of the spaceship. He is confronted with a corridor to his left, a corridor to his right, and straight ahead. Now, straight ahead is very inviting as it's two wide double doors. There are windows through them, and there is white light and, and green is being projected out of that. But over to his left, it actually gives him a bit of a shiver. There's no real markings or anything that seems to give it away, but something about the left corridor is a place where no one walks anymore. To the right seems fine, but he decides to go towards the white light and the green up ahead. Which is also where he's sure that wine is coming from. So he moves forward and he walks in and he finds himself in a rather large room for a ship. There is greenery 
everywhere, and it's the sound of water. But on top of that is this horrible whine, and some feeling in him helps him, and it's not just the sound itself, something else is drawing him to this panel, and he can't help it, but he bangs on the wall, and suddenly the, the noise stops. So now he's calling out, Hello, is anyone there? Starting to feel very embarrassed about being now naked in the ship, walking around barefoot. He knows there's at least another creature on the ship, but he's heard nothing. He's heard no one. He's seen no one. But now he thinks he sees out of the corner of his eye a bit of motion amongst the greenery. He starts snooping around, seeing all sorts of vegetables growing, growing in aquaponics bed, in, in hydroponics beds. The plants are nestled in a body of rocks, and water fills up and then drains over and over again. He sees different fruits growing as well. There's a whole batch of strawberries. And then as he moves more in, he actually finds what are basically raised beds filled with soil. And here are are some dwarf fruit trees, there are root vegetables, and more motion out of the corner of his eye. Hello? Hello? He realizes that in the center of this room is actually main engineering. As he gets close to main engineering, he now has a decision to make. He can either go into main engineering, which might be a good idea. Hopefully there's someone at least in there. Maybe that would be why they haven't heard him. Or he can go around. It's probably best to go into main engineering. So he opens up the main door and finds a little bit of a scary sight. Around the central core, radiating out along the wall around it, is a circular uh, scorch mark that totally encompasses the room, except for in places where there are clearly the, the lack of scorch in the shape of a human-sized and shaped creature. Human, human outlines. Pretty scary. It's very obvious there's no one here. Makes a quick exit. Starts heading up towards where he hopes is the front of the ship and the bridge. Along the way, passes even more plants. This has to be enough food to feed, on regular, 12 people, at least. As he circles around, going towards the right, because the left is just still something wrong about that way. The plant life seems fine, but as he goes to the right, he notices that there are some windows that seem to be one way. So they're mirrors to him, but he can tell that they are windows, mainly because it's so much brighter in this room than it is in whatever's on the other side. But there seems to be a couple of those windows, and then there's a large kitchen area that would easily feed half a dozen people, be serviceable, and continue circling up and finds another exit. Ship seems of a size that he should have run into somebody by now, especially with the amount of food that's on board. He's very confused when he makes it to the main bridge, and there's no one there yet again. He actually moves to the front console just to see what's happening, and he's surprised at how incredibly, viscerally, he recognizes the main console. He sees the E-Drive controls, and he sees the controls, and he notes them as if they're a long-lost friend. He, he knows those controls, well, more than he knows anything else currently. He knows exactly where the emitter adjusters are. He knows how to change triaxions level. All of it makes sense to him. And in some way, he knows that, that is particularly odd. Something tells him that wasn't always the case, and that those controls used to be something more fearful than friendly. One of the interesting things about humanity is that it quickly becomes adjusted to things that are very strange, and then we'll get reminded of them. And it's at this point, he's become aware again that he is naked, and is very much getting worried. And that's it for episode one, Starforge, Tabula Rasa, a foreign body of unknown origin. Wait, that's where you're leaving off? I'm naked, seemingly alone on the ship. I don't know my name. I never found that cat thing. I have no idea what this thing in my neck is. And you're just ending it there? Yup. To learn what happens, keep listening. This show is brought to you ad-free by Privilege. No ads, no Patreon, just a cishet white man with disposable income and time. It is performed, edited, and all that good stuff by Redstone Archender. The story is powered by the game Iron Sworn Starforged by Sean Tompkin. Outro by Glitter Snitchel, channeling the spirits. This has been a Sofa King Cool production.
Additional music also comes from freepd.com.